Hello everyone. In today's session, we are going to discuss about desirability and undesirability. So, when can we call some problem as a desirable one, and when can a problem become an undesirable one? Okay. So, desirability is something like when there exists an algorithm, step by step procedure, and that always going to halt and say that it has a solution. Okay, when there exists a step-by-step -step procedure, an algorithm for any problem, we call that a problem as a decidable one. For example, when I want to find odd number or even number, okay, so what happened? I take a number and divide the number by 2 and based on the remainder, I will decide whether it is an odd or even. And it is always going to take any input and going to get a result for it. Okay, so that is a decidable problem. And coming to the point of our automata theory, uh, we can take some examples like um, acceptance of uh, DFA, acceptance of a deterministic finite automata. So when can an input is accepted by a deterministic finite automata? So we will have a machine, deterministic machine along with an input okay, and the process will be a DFA will have a set of transitions. You will have the states, will have a transitions and the input will have some elements into it. So start from the starting state with the first element. From the starting state with the first element, it take one input at a time and at the end of your input, if the transition is in final state, the input will be accepted. Got it? So we can directly say that for a DFA, we take one input and input will be processed alphabet by alphabet at the end of the input is the transition. So DFA is a structure where you can have a table like this. There is no non-determinism. For each and every state on each and every input symbol, we exactly have one transition. Okay. So all the places it is filled exactly only one. So whatever state you take, whatever input is there, you will have a transition for it. And once on this input, if the transition is done, we will move on to the next element on, next alphabet on. So at the end of your input, always you are going to reach the input. The transition will be either in a final or non-final state, which decides whether the input is accepted or not. Okay. So there exists a procedure or an algorithmic pattern for it, right? Start from the input, we reach the final, always we reach somewhere. Okay, since this table is exactly filled, we know when you are going to find the end of it. Okay, so each and every step, transition is defined. Whether the input is accepted or not, we are going to consume one input at a time and we are going to reach the final, uh, final of the input. At the end of your input, your transition may or may not in the final state, based on the we will accept the input or does not accept the input. Okay, the context is, your machine is always going to stop. It is always going to consume one input at a time. At the end of your input, your machine will stop and say whether the input belongs to the language or not. Okay. So with that, we can say that acceptance of a DFA is always a decidable one. Whatever is the input given, we know we can just take the input, process the input, whether it will be in accepting or this, uh, rejection state, always the machine will stop. Okay. So this is called a decidable language. Okay, so desirability is defined by when exactly we know what is going to happen and we exactly know that the machine is going to halt somewhere and accept the input. Okay, so what happened with the remaining acceptance? So with this I can give some other examples too. See, consider the case of acceptance of a non-deterministic point or a meta. Okay, so we know an NFA will is non-deterministic. It is not exactly like a DFA. Your transition table of your NFA will have a null entry or will have a multiple entries. Okay, so in that case, how can you decide on? You can also know that DFA and NFA are equivalent and we have a procedure to convert an NFA to a DFA. Okay, so you can write the algorithm for acceptance to define an NFA as convert this DFA into an NFA, sorry, NFA into a DFA using your subset construction method. And then we know that acceptance of DFA is already proven. We can just simulate, take one input, simulate your DFA, and it reaches the final state. The input will be either the transition will be either in a final or non final, either it is accepted or not accepted, it is defined. We can finally say that the machine is going to stop and it is going to say that the input is accepted or rejected. 
Okay, so that we call that as a desirable language. So for any language or any problem you take, if there exists an algorithm, a step-by-step -step procedure that is always going to concatenate it and say that the input is accepted or rejected, then we call it as an accepted, decidable language. So that that uh, problem has a solution or not. Okay, it is decidable. And coming to the point of undesirability. Okay, now just consider one example. Um, I'll give you an example of a programming language. I'll take one a looping constraint. Uh, I get a value of n, it is a user defined value, and I write a loop while n greater than 10. I execute this loop, at the end of the loop, I'm going to increment the value of 10. Okay, and you may, you may have a number of statements into it. If I write a program like this, n is a user defined value, and there exists a possibility of loop, it is well and good. And what does a compiler do? Compilers check the syntactic structure and there is no syntactic error over here, right? So I can just write a while statement and there is a value of n is defined already and uh, we can compare an n with the value. It is allowed and you can have a loop properly started, entered and there are some set of statements and I have a defined function, okay? So everything is written clearly in a proper syntactic structure so your compiler is not going to throw an error. But in case, if I take an input of something greater than, already my n value is 12, which is already greater than 10, what happened? This will enter into my loop and n value is greater than, whenever n is greater than 10, your loop get executed. Again, it is n plus plus. So each time n value will be incremented by 1 and the loop gets get into an execution for an infinite time. And we never know the loop is going to stop or not. And who predicted? Who can predict this? It is not possible, right? We cannot predict it. We cannot write a program for predicting all this when the value was predicted by the user. Okay, if this entered value was entered by the user, and if there is somewhere in the programming language in the statement of your while loop, you may have a function for decrementing that. Okay, it is all if if constraint, and there is no possible prediction for these kind of looping structure. Okay, so we can call that hurting problem of any C program. Okay, to check whether the program C program is going to halt all the possible inputs. It is undecidable. We cannot predict on it. There is no possibility of predicting these conditions. Okay, and the similar case occur for the Turing machine too. Now listen carefully. When I take a Turing machine and I just draw one loop for a Turing machine, I can have Q0 as state. A Q1, another state, I can put a loop here. Uh, my Q0 read one input as 0 and 0 remains as it is. I just move one step right. I can take two root zeros and it goes here Q1. In Q1, if the input is 0, move left. So it goes to Q0 state again. So this is a looping constraint. Q0 read the 0, go to Q1. And Q1 root, read the 0, go to Q0. So this keep on moving and there is no stopping criteria for it. Okay, so the loop that we have decided, we have discussed in case of your uh, C programming or any programming language is similar to the top of the loop that we have for a Turing machine. We cannot predict that when a Turing machine goes into an, a dead loop. Okay, it is not possible. The reason is, see here, sometimes a Turing machine acceptance is defined like this. Your input is written in the tape from left to right and the tape length is infinite. We cannot predict the length of your tape is, it is infinite. And you, can, you are allowed to use the entire tape of the input and you can have any possible move, left or right move. In the cases of our NFA or DFA, the acceptance is defined whenever we reach the end of the input, the acceptance is defined. But in case of a Turing machine, we cannot predict the decision. The reason is whenever a Turing machine goes into an acceptance state, you are going to accept it. And whenever the Turing machine enter into a rejection state, you are going to reject it. But when it is going to enter into the acceptance, if the coding was not written clearly, if the program is, if the transition is not defined properly, and somewhere in the program, if you have a looping structure like this, then it goes into a loop, it will never halt. 
Okay, so with this we can say that the acceptance of a Turing machine or the halting of a Turing machine is undesirable. Okay, so now you could have got an idea of what is desirability and what is undesirability, right? And that is a lot and lot of programs, problems that actually falls into this undesirability and desirability. You can compare Turing machine with the existing uh, or the existing computers. Okay, so whatever problem that is solvable, that are desirable, can be desirable by the Turing machine too. So Turing machine act as a simulator right now for predicting whether the problem is desirable or undesirable problem. Okay, I think you've got a clear idea of what is desirability and what is undesirability, right? And there are theorems which is used to prove that acceptance of Turing machine is undesirable, halting problem of Turing machine is undesirable and all. So we'll see to it one by one later. Thank you.